Hello, and we're awfully glad that we're able to have one of our recreation industry superstars with us by video. She can't be with us here today, but we have Jessica Wall, the Manager of Government Affairs for the Outdoor Industry Association, to talk a little bit about the, the uh, data that OIA uh, has been collecting, and uh, uh, she's doing that because she will be out at Rendezvous. Uh, while we're watching this video, and we're really appreciative, Jessica, that you're here yeah, with us here today. Sure. I'll be actually outdoor recreating. This is good. This is good. <laughs> we, we all were there. Yeah. All right. Well, Jess, let me just begin by complimenting OIA. Uh, you are the source of the, the frequently cited $642 billion per year that the recreation industry, the outdoor recreation economy, right. uh, is, is representing in this country, and we really compliment what you're doing. Uh, you have also reached out to a, a large number of recreation organizations to work right. with the initial survey and also with the, the new survey, and that's really exciting because you're about ready to go I'm out with a survey yeah. that will update the figure and, yeah. uh, and give us new data, and I'm sure we'll probably uh, have some other differences. Um, maybe what we could do is just start with a couple questions. First sure. of all, why don't you just describe OIA? Mm -hmm and a little bit in, about your economic data collection efforts. Sure. So Outdoor Industry Association is the leading national trade association for about 1,500 uh, manufacturers, suppliers, and retailers across the country uh, that in part make up this $646 billion industry that you talked about. And um, our second iteration of the Recreation Economy Report came out in 2012. And this was a really exciting development. For the first time, we counted down to the state level. So what is our impact at the state level? Uh, we looked at our jobs impact. 6.1 million American jobs rely on the outdoor recreation economy and 80 billion in local local state uh, and national federal tax dollars come in from the outdoor recreation economy. So we realized, and everyone else realized, you know, this is big business and uh, this has significant benefits to um, local communities. This is gateway economies. These are rural gateway economies that rely on outdoor recreation, but all the way to suburban economies that rely on trails and green spaces for retention and recruitment for families, people wanting to live there. And then our metropolitan areas, like what this, you know, Highline did to New York City and revitalizing that area of the city. So um, local, rural, uh, and metropolitan areas are all impacted by the outdoor recreation economy. Great. Well, I have to tell you that we use the data that that you've Good. generated in our request to all 50 governors to, to designate June as Great Outdoors, Great Outdoors Month. Month. Yep. And so all 50 of the governors That's cite awesome. the economic importance Thank of you. the outdoor recreation economy in their proclamation. So, awesome. you know, just one. But that's really the question. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you as an organization and how your members make use of the data that you gather? Sure. So our members use the data um, to ensure the growth and success of the outdoor industry. And a lot of this is to push policies. Um, a lot of them are bipartisan policies to make sure that we're getting the funding and the infrastructure uh, that we need to continue to grow these jobs. And so we're saying your community relies on these jobs, relies on these businesses but we're not in making those investments to ensure that this uh, industry can continue to uh, be successful in the future. We're actually looking at budget cuts and a lot of other um, transportation issues that are happening. And so using those numbers to show this is a real business issue as well as, you know, um, something we really care about. We care about our public lands and waters. Uh, beyond our members, members of Congress from both sides of the aisle have cited our members in hearings and briefings and testimony. Uh, the national campaigns, actually the presidential campaigns are using our numbers and the president's even used our numbers to uh, signify the importance of trails and green spaces and national parks. I think not just to our national identity because that's there, but to our national economy. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, each of us, whether it's in our own checkbook or, or as a family we right. gather and we decide do we invest it in buying a house or do we buy a car or how do we spend our money okay. and your data helps the federal and state governments make decisions about investing tax dollars do they invest it in health or education or recreation and frankly we believe there can be a legitimate uh, request for funding the the infrastructure right. that we need so that's great tell us a little bit about the proposed ORSA the outdoor sure. recreation satellite account how do you see that and how do you 
How do you look at that as a step forward? Yeah, I think first and foremost, ORSA will recognize the outdoor industry as a sector of the U.S. economy, which is a huge leap forward. I mean, just being recognized with agriculture and manufacturing and transportation is a big step, and we're really excited about that. It will also uh, quantify our impacts on the national gross domestic product for the first time. And with the passage of the REC Act, which is a bill introduced in both the House and the Senate, we'll have annual data so we can track our job growth, just like other industries and sectors are able to track, and relate it to some of the policies that the government's making. Are we continuing to grow at the same rate we were growing when LWCF was, was funded fully, or are we seeing that that's had an impact? So we're really excited um, about, about what ORSA will do for us to help track, but more importantly, probably what it will do for elected officials. I think once we have this data and they have these official government numbers, they'll be able to look at it and say, maybe this isn't just a land management decision. Maybe this is a transportation decision. Maybe this is a health and education and labor, and you can go on and on and make sure that they're using uh, this data and it's integrated into all sorts of policy decisions that they're making and not just siloed with um, the land managers. Uh, and I think the more uh, they use the numbers, the more the numbers come out on an annual basis. We'll see the real ties to the livelihood of businesses and people in gateway communities and um, the way that you know some businesses in Salt Lake City can retain and attract skilled workforce because they have great trails and ski resorts and, and access to those things. So um, we're, we're really excited about the ORSA account, really thankful for everyone who's been working on that effort. That's great. And we have people in the room who will be able to talk to us about the ORSA account and what data can be used that's already been collected and maybe even talk about how in the future we might collect data with slightly different kinds of questions to, to, to supplement and increase the, the quality of the data that ORSA will represent. Uh, why don't we talk now as a concluding question about mm -hmm. what you and uh, your colleagues at OIA see as important gaps, sure. as, as needs that um, right now we should be focusing on because part of what we're trying to do is to say how do we identify some goals and right. then how do we move towards making sure that in 10 years we have the, the data we need to make good decisions. Right. Well, I think as a policy wonk, there's always going to be gaps in data because there's always more information that would be helpful. Um, the ORSA account is a great start, but it only counts national numbers in California in the first iteration. So we really need the passage of the REC Act to drill down to the state level. And I do think once elected officials see the value of the data, they'll find the resources and we will help that through appropriations to drill down to the state level, maybe even further. Um, it doesn't track right now our report and I'm not sure ORSA international tourism and the people that are coming into this country to go to our parks and public lands what is that economic impact and we found that with our last study we were leaving out a couple forms of recreation that are really important so horseback riding um, the the races are big tough mudder and mountain biking races and ultra running races so those are just two examples of I think about 10 or 11 new forms of recreation that we've added to the study that will come out in 2017 and we've realized that state data is great but if you live in eastern Colorado that's a little bit different than the economy in western Colorado mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so when you give state data to a senator uh, they might say well this is okay or a congressman but this isn't my district this is mm -hmm. his district and so we're gonna actually drill down to the congressional level and we think that's important new data points uh, that we need but always want more and I think once the government is officially counting our data our organization your organization and others can focus on the subsidiary the secondary benefits of outdoor recreation whether that's health um, introducing youth and participation, infrastructure. So we're excited to get to a point where it's not just about those high-level national numbers, but we can drill down and see what's actually important and going on in local communities. That's great. Very helpful. I will just say that as Jess has mentioned, there will always be opportunities to discuss nuances. Uh, driving to the National Association of State Park Directors meeting in southern Indiana, I saw a billboard that I didn't know how to react to. It said, the nation's only indoor zip line in a cave. Huh. Now we don't know whether that should be counted as outdoor recreation right. or point. whether it should be reflected in ORSA or any other right. study, but that's okay. worth a, at least a sip of, of coffee or a beer to talk about. Right, so. and there's people who think that that counts and so we should be talking to them. <laughs> well thank you Jess and we thank look forward you. to have you be part of the ongoing discussions on this topic. Thank you. Great, thanks.